لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا من لو يشاء الله أطعمه إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توصية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في الصور فإذا هم من الأجدات إلى ربهم ينصرون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محورون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم أن لا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكزه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين ليوضر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم من 
مما عملت أيدينا أنعما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي انشاها اول مره قل يحييها الذي انشاها اول مره وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلاء وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم Sadaq Allah, Mawlana Al-Azim, Verily Almighty Allah speaks the truth. Jazakallah khair, Afis Imran, for that melodious recitation of the glorious Qur'an. May Almighty Allah accept, and may Allah bless us all through the barakah of the glorious Qur'an. My respected elders, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, and beautiful children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it gives me great pleasure and honor indeed to welcome to Cape Town and to our Jumaya today, close colleague and friend, a beloved friend, one of my colleagues who studied also at Darul Ulum in Newcastle, who is currently the Secretary General of the Jamiatul Ulama of Joburg, of Gauteng, as well as the General Secretary of the United Ulama Council of South Africa doing great and sterling work throughout the country. And I'm referring to my beloved brother, the Honorable Maulana Yusuf Ismail Patel. And without further ado, I call upon the Honorable Maulana, my dear friend and brother, to kindly address us. Faliyatafaddal mashkura, ya fadilat al-Sheikh.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد عرض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والله جعل لكم من بيوتكم سكنا صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين my respected mothers sisters brothers and elders in islam the family unit the family as we know it is probably the most important social structure that contributes to the well-being of bro the broader society. It is said that happy couples rear happy children, and happy children make up happy families, and happy families make up prosperous communities. So the entire stability of society goes back to the relationship between husband and wife and parent and child. If that relationship between spouses and between parents is solidified, then we can expect to have a stable, healthy, prosperous community. Now Allah says in the verse that I've recited before you that Wallahu ja'ala lakum min buyutikum sakana that Allah has made your homes places of peace, abodes of tranquility. The family, the house, the home rather, serves as a haven, a refuge for people who do battle in the outside world and come, in, come into their homes and isolate and insulate themselves rather from the harsh realities of the outside world. So the family unit, the home, plays an extremely critical part in the well-being of our children and the well-being and the healthy relationship between husband and wife. And to demonstrate the role function of the various members in the family. We look at the dream of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam. Nabi Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam, when he was young, saw a dream. Inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkaba. I've seen 11 stars. Was shamsa wal qamar and the sun and the moon. Ra'aytuhum li sajideen. O my father, I've seen these, the 11 stars and the sun and the moon prostrating before me. Very much later in his life, this dream unfolded when he saw his father, his mother, and his 11 brothers enter the kingdom and prostrate before his throne. Now in this dream, the father represented, or the son represented the father. The moon represented the mother. And the 11 stars represented the brothers. What's the functional role of the star in the social galaxy? The, the functional role of the sun in the social galaxy is to provide energy to provide light. 
to bring res uh, you know, valuable resource to Mother Earth. And the same role function is expected of the male within the social galaxy. The role of the male in the family unit is to dispel darkness, to engender confidence, to give uh, direction, to bring the resources into the home. That's the role of the male. The role of the female, on the other hand, the moon also comes with a sense of light. But the light of the moon, the full moon, brings with it a sense of inner peace, tranquility, harmony. That's the role function of the mother or the female within the family unit. And it is no coincidence that the stars are most visible in the presence of the moon. Children have a natural affinity to the mother, more than the father. But what do we learn from the galaxy of stars that we see before us? There is space in the to togetherness of the stars. What does it teach us? That each child is a unique star with his own individual personality. And you need to give every child, every sibling, that space within the family unit so he or she can find its own identity. Let there be to get a space in their togetherness. This dream very briefly and very beautifully illustrates the functional value of the male and the female and the relationship of children with the parents. Now what happens when the sun and the moon vie to be in the same place at the same time? You have either a social eclipse or a lunar eclipse. The, the, the grandeur of the sun is overshadowed by the moon or the beauty and the splendor of the moon is overshadowed by the sun. Now, the same happens when men and women do not know their role functions and they vie to be in the same place at the same time, you have a social eclipse. A social eclipse that overshadows the functional worth of the male or the social, a, a, a lunar eclipse that overshadows the beauty, the splendor, and the serenity of the female in a, the family relationship. So when we talk about the family, for our purposes, we look at two relationships. The spousal relationship between husband and wife and the par parent relationship. Uh, ship. Now, the dominant need, let's look at the spousal relationship. The dominant need of a male in a relationship is to feel respected. And the dominant need of a female, of the wife, is to feel loved. And if you can maintain this balance in your relationship between husband and wife, you found the formula to a successful and happy marriage. The minute you compromise the respect of the male or the minute the female feels unloved, that's when the lights go off in the relationship. So what is important in harnessing the husband-wife or the spousal relationship is not to, not so much to forge a, uh, uh, you know, a forge a relationship of compatibility. No two human beings are equally compatible. The success in the spousal, in your spousal relationship, 
is how do you deal with incompatibility? You and your spouse look at the same picture and you come to different conclusions. You, you think or you try and resolve a common problem and look at it differently. How do you manage incompatibility? That is the success to your relationship, not trying to forge compatibility. Every human being is unique, thinks differently, has his or her own preferences. You cannot gloss over the fact that every human being has his or her own DNA. You think differently, you behave differently. That's as far as your spousal relationships go. As far as parenting goes, children learn less from what we say to them, and they learn more from how we treat our partners in their presence. They learn more from how we treat our partners in their presence than from what we say to them. Now, if we want to achieve the promised objective of marriage and the family unit, where Allah says, it is designed to give you sukoon, tranquility, inner peace, fulfillment, then we have to fulfill five fundamentals. The first fundamental is that the family unit has to provide a protective function. People, members of the family, need to be supporting each other in terms of times of confusion, difficulty, anxiety. Let me give, illustrate just one example. The darkest, the most difficult, the most anxious moment in the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was when he was conferred with the mantle of prophethood. He was in the cave, Jibreel Alayhi Salam came to him, embraced him, told him, Iqra, read, and after that experience, he ran, ran down the mountain, crying, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, cover me up. And he himself says, I thought this was the end. I was confused. I was physically exhausted because of that experience. I was anxious. Question is, who did he turn to in one of the most difficult moments of his life? Did he go to a neighbor, a friend? He went to no other than his wife, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. She served as his pillar. She gave him the shoulder. She gave him the supportive ear. And she said, Kalla, wallahi la yughzi kallahu abada. Allah will never leave you to perish, O oh my husband. His wife served as his refuge. Let us ask ourselves what kind of relationship we have where we are able to lend an ear and a shoulder to our spouses or to our children. Do they feel confident enough to come and talk about the anxieties with us? They say the acid test the acid test in determining your spousal relationship and your parental relationship is to see if your partner or if your child feels confident enough to come and talk to you about his or her emotional needs. Not material needs, emotional needs. Does your child, does your spouse feel that he, that she can find an understanding husband or not. So the first function is to provide, the, uh, is to create the protective environment where members of the family can find support, emotional support from each other. The second uh, requirement 
is the re recreational function of the family unit. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest of mankind, found it necessary to play and run and compete with his wife Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Where has that sunnah gone? Do we play with our own spouses? Do we play with our own children? People who play together stay together. That's the maxim. People who play together stay together. Recreation in this relationship is like salt, what salt is to food. Without the recreation, recreational dimension in the family unit, your relationship becomes bland, tasteless. What kind of recreational function do we have within our own family units? Thirdly, there's a rel religious function that we need to fulfill within the family. The religious function, we pray together, we uh, do acts of charity as a family unit together, and this religious function gives us purpose, a sense or a purpose and direction in life. If there's no religious function, there's no direction, there's no purpose in life. Are we inculcating that kind of religious environment where every member of the family knows what it is to be Muslim. Where have I come from? Where am I going to? What is expected of me as an individual? Remember, there's a, a major shift from the time many people, especially from my age upwards, grew up in, and the environment our children grow up in. We grew up in an environment where we only had to answer or respond to what? So our fathers, our uncles, our imams, our teachers, our, the neighbor from next door told us what to do, and that was enough for us to respond. But there's a value shift. And today, what is not sufficient? It is why. Why do I have to do what I need to do? That, if we cannot answer the why, we intellectually lose our children or our spouses. And you can only answer the why if you create that kind of environment within the family. So everyone knows and understands the wisdom, the rationale, the purpose of why they have to do what they do. Then you have the social function. The social function is where families moved and visited extended members of the family as one unit. Today, what has the parents move in one direction, the children move in another direction, our relatives have become mere acquaintances, which we meet at the funeral or a wedding or on the day of Eid. That's the only, uh, those are the only occasions which allow us to get together. And if there's no family, there is no sense of belonging. And if there's no sense of belonging, you feel vulnerable in the real world. Therefore, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Quran repeatedly insists that a true Muslim, people of uh, Ulul Albab, people of intellect, are those who foster ties, those who keep the, those ties alive. And then lastly, you have the educational function. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was called Bahrul Uloom, the ocean of knowledge. Pra because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spent valuable time, quality time, teaching, educating the family members. 
If we are unable to fulfill these five fundamentals, then the promised objective of the family unit will not be realized. You know, the famous adage uh, regarding recreation is a child continually asked the father that, oh, dad, take me fishing. Father never had the time. Eventually, one day the father said, okay, son, let's go. So they went and they spent the day together. Both father and son diarized the event. They wrote it down in the diaries. The father wrote in his diary, wasted day, took my son for fishing. And the son wrote in his diary, the best day in my life, spent an entire day with my dad. That's the difference. So we can educate our children. Uh, Pod, there is more to being a parent and a spouse than simply providing them the opportunity to go to school. They need to be taught people skills, soft skills. How do we engage, interact with other human beings? And he said, and I'll end off on this, that there were a group of college students who hired a boat, old man in the boat who plied his trade by taking people, uh, 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 you know, giving them a boat ride. So these college students jumped into the boat and they asked the old man to take them through the river. And as young men, they tried to make, you know, a joke and mock the old person. So one asked them, do you know chemistry? And the old man says, who's he? Where does he live? I haven't met him. And they laugh and say, oh, old man, you've wasted half your life. And later on, another student asks the same question. And he says, no, I don't know. And he says, you've wasted half your life. And the third student does the same. And the old man resp responds in the similar manner. And after a while, a huge wave comes and rocks the boat. And now the old man can see the fear, the anxiety on the faces of these young men. And another wave comes. Then he turns around and says, oh, my children, tell me, do you know how to swim? And they say, no. And he says, now you've, you've wasted your entire life. In other words, as parents, we need to know and give our children the essential survival skills. The world that they're growing up is very different from the world where we grew up. And if we are not going to give them skills that will help them navigate the challenges that they go through, we may be wasting their entire life. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our spouses and children, as the Quran says, qurrata a'yun, the coolness of our eyes. When we see our spouses, when we see our children, we, we feel that inner satisfaction and solace. But if we're not going to respond adequately to the challenges, our very dreams could turn into nightmares. Allah forbid. Wa akhiru dawan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Takbir. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. Jazakallah khair to our beloved brother, your honorable Maulana Yusuf Ismail Patel, for that very, very soul stirring and deeply thought provoking message on the family unit. A beautiful, thought provoking tafsir of the first part, first ayats of Surah, Tul Surah Yusuf. May Allah bless you, Maulana. Maulana is down here for a conference. 
for the weekend, and we hope that everything will go well. Of course, for those who are late, who came late, Maulana Yusuf Ismail Patel is the Secretary General of the Jamiat, Jamiat Ulama of Gauteng, also the, Jam, uh, the Secretary General of the United Ulama Council of South Africa. We are indeed honored to have you with us today. And Maulana is a colleague of mine coming from the years 1970, where we spent some good time in the Darul Ulum in Newcastle. Indeed, an honor to have him today. We're also very honored to have another colleague who was also with us on Darul Ulum. Afterwards, he went to Egypt, and he is a world-renowned Qari today, none other than the Honorable Sheikh Abdurrahman Saidin, who is somewhere. I would like to request him to come forward, to come join Maulana in front here. And with the blessings of my co-imam, Sheikh Ismail, we will also request him to lead us in the Jumma Salah. So Sheikh Abdurrahman Saidin, I don't know exactly where he's seated. Kindly come to the front, please. Shukran. Just a few announcements. We have been asked to make dua for Mrs. Rukia Mustafa Sayed from Peter Maritzburg. It was a janaza. We pray to Almighty Allah that Allah grant all our deceased wherever they are buried. Allah grant nur in their kuburs and grant them jannatul firdaus. Amin ya rabbal alameen. We have quite a few people who are not well. Their families ask us to make dua for them. The first one is Mrs. Khairun Nisa Bray, the wife of our beloved Dr. Usman Bray, and also for Mr. Shamsuddin Y.W. Parker, who is very ill in hospital. Also for Mr. Hussein Amin Parker of Plettenberg Road, and also for Adil Kamar, who is in the ICU in hospital. May Allah grant them and all the sick people Shifa and Kamila. Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. And I just want to remind you that enrollment is open for our daily madrasa in the afternoons. Anyone who is interested to enroll their children in our madrasa, they're welcome to speak to Mr. Abdul Hamid Furfari or any of the committee members, inshallah. And then also, I think it's only right because there's so much negativity going on that we also mention the good news and the positive news. So in that, in the light of that, we say Mubarak to our brother, Ajay Rafiq Kaji, sitting in front here, who has been appointed as a deputy principal at Athlone High School. May Almighty Allah bless you, and may Allah grant you the necessary strength to take your school to heights, inshallah. Amen. And then, of course, the, Janjar, the Janjira Habsani Society will be hosting the annual Na'at program, and the guest will be Hafiz Sijan Qadri, and that will be next Wednesday, the 13th of November, at the Rosha Manzil at 8.30 p.m. All welcome, inshallah. Our gift shop at the back, uh, Alhamdulillah, received some very new stock, very interesting stock, and we know all the proceeds go towards the maintenance of the masjid. So kindly go have a look in our gift shop and please support us, inshallah. Then we know every week we are selling the best acne in the country, and that is after Jumaa. And we make special arrangements for people to buy the coupons in order to get the acne. So we give first preference to those people who come with coupons. But sometimes people who've got the coupons, they think, I'm safe, I got my coupon. So with the result that after we finish with those people who have the coupons, we sell to the people who have the cash with them. And cash is always welcome, as you know. And unfortunately, then those people with the coupons, they lose out and there's not food. So those who have the coupons, try to go, but first make your sunnah salah, don't rush out, then go and get your necessary order of acne, inshallah. Just one thing I need to mention, I'll take about a minute or two. I think the entire community was shocked on Wednesday morning when we found that the Makbara in Mowbray was totally desecrated. Now, if you look at a certain angle, there's a big cross that was made with the tombstones of people who were buried. And some people immediately jump on the wrong wagon by saying, these evangelists and these Christians. That is wrong. That is wrong. 
because he will speak only with understanding. And when Sheikh Riyadh, the deputy president of the MJC, contacted me, I looked at the whole scenario and I say, if you look from this angle, it looks like an upside down cross, which is a symbol of Satanism. And then within certain graves, there were little triangles were put there. Those are also Satanist symbols with, which represents a A, which stands for anarchy and chaos, because this is the primary objective of Satanism to bring about anarchy and chaos in the world. So from my humble perspective and understanding, because I've studied some comparative religion at least, from my humble perspective, this is the work of Satanists. Because just the night before the Tuesday night, in my weekly program from 9 to 10 with Haji Yusuf Fisher, I spoke on the subject of Satanism, and I also condemned this plan of the Department of Education, of CSE, Curriculum of Sex Education, which I want to introduce into the schools, teaching our little children who must still grow and develop, want to teach them about masturbation, about exploring their sexual organs and their private organs. No decent person, no decent person can remain quiet. My children and your children and our grandchildren on school. Molana referred in his lecture to the family unit. If you destroy and corrupt the minds of the children, can you imagine what kind of society and community we are going to have tomorrow? I'm asking people to remain calm. Don't swear, don't get angry. This is an issue that was given over to the South African police. And I hope and I pray and I urge from the mimbar and the mihrab of Masjid al-Quds, I urge the South African government and the South African police to keep no stone unturned to, keep, to catch the culprits who are responsible for the desecration of our Maqbara. It can happen anywhere. Maybe they're putting out a feeler to see what is the strength of the Muslim community. Even if my mother and father's tombstone was not desecrated, then I should still condemn it in the strongest possible terms if it was someone else's mothers and fathers because we are one community. Every mother is our mother and every father is our father and every child is our child. May Almighty Allah bless us and I hope this message will go out here from Masjid Al-Quds that we condemn that act in totality and we will stay alert but we'll also face the issue with dignity, with decorum and with Islamic ethos, inshallah. Amin. And then last but not least, our speaker for next year will be Brother Nazir Malik. He's a final... What did I say? Maaf. Ek is al ehedal. Ek is altijd voor die tijd. Our speaker for next week will be Brother Nazir Malik. He's a final year student at IPSA. And as you know, we always encourage our youth and, 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 and our students to come forward and encourage them in achieving the success in their studies, inshallah. Amen. Yes, and very importantly, you know it is Rabbi al Awal, our night of Mawlud, special Mawlud, to celebrate and commemorate the blessed birth of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be next Saturday, inshallah, amin. And our program will be in between Maghrib and Ishai, inshallah. Next Saturday, big night, Mawlud program. Everyone is welcome, men and women and children. Everyone is welcome. And of course, there's quite a few people, when I came in, they said, Sheikh, Please make a special du'a for the spring book of tomorrow. I say let the best team win. My team, the All Blacks, already lost. But inshallah, patriotic 
and South Africa. Tomorrow I will be bet for the Boca, inshallah. Takbir! I sound quiet, mashallah. Uh, before we have the azan, can I ask everyone to kindly stand up, step forward, make the salves one time, and at the same time we ask the Honorable Sheikh Abdurrahman Saidin to kindly come to the front, please. Make the salves one time, heels on the line, shoulder to shoulder, please. Adel Sheikh, yes, Malana, and Sheikh Ismail. Shukran, Jazakallah, and by Termakasi, we'll have the Adana. Shadu Allah ilaha illa Allah Ashadu أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفناء الله أكبر
إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوه عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم إذا الإسلام والمسلمين وأبدنا الشرك والمسكين بحقك رب الخير برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة تنجي قائلها من عذاب النار وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله مولانا العظيم الحديث قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أَوَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ أَفْشُ السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ أو كما قال صدقت يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بارك الله لنا ولكم بالقرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله أستغفر الله أستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولوالدي ولوالديكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فتوبوا إلى الله إنه كان غفارا اللهم صل وسل وزد وأنم وتفدل وبارك لجلالك وكمالك على سيدنا وبارك وأشرف المبارك ومولانا محمد وقمر رضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل سحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على سيد البشر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما أرسلناك إلا 
رحمة للعالمين وقال تعالى مخبرا وآمرا قولا كريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ورد اللهم عن خلفاء الراشدين أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنهم وعن بقية الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين وتابع التابعين وتابعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا وسائر بلاد المسلمين أجمعين فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا واحفظنا يا الله يا الله من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم عيد المسجد الأقصى إلى رحاب المسلمين إلى أخوي المسجد الحرام ومسجد النبوي المدني الشريف آمين يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استوصفوا في رحمكم الله استووا اعتدلوا فإن تصوية الصفوف من تمام الصلاة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم انت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت يا ذا الجلال والاكرام سمعنا واطعنا غفرانك ربنا واليك المصير ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين يا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم يا ربنا تقبل منا إنك إنك أنت التواب الرحيم يا ربنا كن لنا ولا تكن علينا يا ربنا كن لنا ناصرا ومؤيدا يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا يا الله ما مضى يا واسع الكرم اللهم اغفر لموتى المسلمين الذين شهدوا لك بالوحدانية اللهم اشف مرضانا واشف مرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنا وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع النبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين قال الله تبارك وتعالى مخبرا وآمرا إن الله ها صلون على النبي أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا سلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحاب فضلك دعواهم فيها سبحانك اللهم وتحيتهم فيها سلام وآخر دعواهم عن الحمد لله